Hello students, welcome to physics class. In this particular video, we are going to be explain about this 14th chapter of second piece of physics that is semiconductor electronics. And semiconductor electronics, around some 10 mark question is asking and this is a chapter without any numerical problems because of that reason this chapter is important those students who find it difficult to get a pass marks because 10 mark question is asking in this chapter particular chapter let us see first what is a electronics this electronics is a, a branch of science which deals with electron flow over a vacuum or gas or a semiconductor okay or I can say it is a controlled flow of electrons over a semiconductor that particular branch is called electronics you can see in a pictures will be I see you can observe this it is the integrated circuit that will be a semiconductor chip is there and the current is passing to this over a semiconductor electronics flow through a semiconductor these particular devices are called semiconductor devices or electronic devices in this uh, electronic devices whatever we are using a semiconductor what is semiconductor and about these things we will discuss first what is semiconductor the solids can be classified into three types that is metals insulator and semiconductor Based on this conductivity or resistivity or band structure, we classify the solids into three types as a metals, semiconductors and insulators. Now based on band theory or band structure, we can understand how it is classified and about these things we are discuss first. Okay. See, band theory explain about this classification of solids based on this energy band structures. You already know about these atoms in a previous chapter like that each atom has a specific structures like that some number of electrons are revolving in a various orbit as in figure and these electrons when it is revolving in a various orbit it causes energy and that energy level diagram already you studied in this particular chapter if you observe these energy levels of a single or individual atom is a discrete energy levels and it is measured in electron volts energy is measured in electron volts and when these atoms are clubbed together it forms a molecules then atoms are come closer and then energy levels also will be overlaps and by that we can observe these solids in case of solids these atoms are again once again very close to each other and it is tightly packed as a result these atoms are very close to each other these energy levels which become overlaps and this energy levels or this discrete energy level is going to be broadened and forms a energy bands that we can observe here 1s 2s 2p energy bands are formed we can observe in pictures when a atom is single it has a discrete energy levels as atoms are clubbed together and forms a molecules as a result this number of energy levels are going to be overlaps then when it is forms a, a solids the atoms are again closely packed and it forms energy bands and what is this energy bands the large number of closely spaced energy levels on a solids are called energy band this large number of closely spaced energy levels are called energy bands in order to explain this uh, uh, classification of solids we have a importance of two energy bands that is a conduction band and valence band what is that conduction band and valence band let us see the energy band which includes energy levels of valence electrons are called valence band that means the energy bands in which it includes the valence electrons energy levels what is valence electrons the electrons which is revolving in a outermost orbit you can observe in picture that those electrons which is revolving in a uh, outermost orbit are called valence electrons and that valence electrons whatever possess energy due to that reason the valence band is formed and 
what is the above this valence band what is the band is present and that is called conduction band the energy band above the valence band is called conduction band then what is the energy difference between top of this valence band to bottom of this conduction band is called energy gap or forbidden gap okay? and whatever this energy difference between uh, the top of valence band to bottom of conduction band that is energy gap okay? and uh, once again you can see in the pictures the band valence band is there and it is partially or completely filled by electrons few electrons you can observe in a valence band and above there will be conduction band is there and it is empty at zero kelvins and what is a, a gap between this particular the valence band and conduction band and that is called energy gap or forbidden energy gap and based on this energy gap we are easily explain this classification of solids as a, a metals insulator and semiconductors let us see as the temperature increases what happens in a solid so you can observe in a pictures as temperature is increases above the zero kelvins the few electrons in a valence band is jumps to conduction band as a result there is a few vacancies created in a valence band that vacancy which is created in a valence band are virtually positive charge and they are called holes and whatever these electrons jump to this conduction band they are called free electrons so that as temperature increases this will happens in case of uh, semiconductors let us understand this classification of solids based on these band structures okay? the metals semiconductor insulators are classified based on this band structure the energy bands in case of conductor you can observe in pictures in case of conductor the valence band and conduction bands are overlaps because of that reason there will be no energy gap between valence band and conduction band energy gap is zero let's see the energy bands in case of semiconductors you can see in a pictures in case of semiconductor the narrow energy gap is exist between valence band and conduction band that energy gap that gap between valence band and conduction band is in order of 0.72 electron volt in case of germanium semi crystal so this is one of the semiconductor or in another semiconductor silicon air energy gap is 1.1 electron volt like that a narrow energy gap is exists between this valence band and conduction band due to that reason as the temperature increases we can observe this as a temperature increases electrons are jumping from valence band to conduction band and is create a vacancy in a valence band is called holes and what is the electrons present in a conduction band is called electrons and like that you can observe in a pictures there will be a holes is present uh, there is a vacancy in a lattice side and that vacancy created because of this transition of electrons from valence band to conduction band can be occupied by neighboring electrons you can observe in picture neighboring electron is occupying that holes as the electrons is moving and that vacancy also shifted in opposite directions like that in a semiconductor there is two type of charge carriers holes and electrons and we'll have another class of solids that is a insulators in case of these non metals or insulator this energy band diagram is like this there will be large energy gap is exist between valence band and conduction band due to that reason it is difficult to transit a electron from valence band to conduction band their energy gap is greater than 3 electron volts then that type of solids are classified as an insulator because in this cases it is not the sufficient energy is not sufficient to jump from valence band to conduction band due to that reasons there will be no free electrons in conduction band it does not conduct the current or electricity and once again i can summarize this particular classifications of a solid based on these band diagrams i can observe this band energy band diagram the conduction band and valence bands are overlaps in case of metals like that there will be no energy gap and in case of semiconductor the energy gap is less than 3 electron volt such a way that 
there'll be a narrow gap which is exists between this valence band and conduction band and in case of insulator or non metals there will be wide energy gap between valence band and conduction band where that energy gap is greater than free lockdown holes from this picture we can clearly understand the metals in semiconductor insulator what is the band structure and let us see what are the properties of this particular metals insulator and semiconductors you can observe here the metals in case of metals this energy band diagram shows that conduction band and valence bands are overlaps hence the conduction bands contains sufficient number of free electrons because it is overlaps already valence band is overlaps there will be sufficient number of electrons is available for conductivity and due to that reason they conduct the electricity or current and because of enough number of free electrons already exist in a conduction band and um, but their resistance their resistance increases as a temperature increases or i can say conductivity decreases as the temperature increases example copper gold silver etc so that is insulator means and there will be a forbidden energy gap is large and hence the electrons in a valence band find difficult to get in a conduction band you cannot find any electrons in conduction band conduction band is empty and due to that reason they do not conduct the electricity or current and hence they have a low conductivity or high resistivity okay example glass plastic wood etc they have a insulator because of that reasons or they are non metals and in case of semiconductor there will be narrow energy gap is exist between conduction band and valence band that energy gap is order of 0.7 electron volt for germanium or 1.1 electron volt for silicon so that at room temperature uh, there will be a, some a few electrons are present in a conduction band and due to that reasons they shows a conductivity but the conductivity is lies between conductors and insulators but as a temperature increases that resistivity is decreases okay or resistivity decreases with respect with the increase of temperature or its conductivity is increases with a raise of temperature so one important difference between conductors and semiconductor I already know in a conductor as a temperature increases conductivity decreases but in semiconductor as a temperature increases conductivity increases example silicon germanium carbon etc and you can observe in a picture also there will be a graph is given as a temperature increases the uh, resistance is decreases exponentially means resistance is decreases or conductivity increases but at absolute zero or zero kelvin that semiconductor is a, a perfect insulator semiconductor is behaving like a perfect insulator at zero kelvin but as the temperature increases this conductivity is increases or resistivity decreases and this turn to be a conductor classify the semiconductor into two types as an intrinsic semiconductor means pure semiconductor and in order to increase its conductivity we'll adding some impurity atoms then it is become impure or eccentric semiconductor let us study details about this uh, two types of semiconductor first we'll see what is an intrinsic semiconductor you can observe here in a pictures in a periodic table there are few elements are present naturally available elements and they are called few uh, they are called pure semiconductor and that pure semiconductors are called intrinsic semiconductor and they are tetravalent atoms there be four valence electrons in their outermost orbit you can observe in a pictures that the silicons then in outermost orbit four valence electrons are there and this group of elements is classified as a semiconductors in a periodic tables and let us see in a semiconductor what is the structure a pure semiconductor in a pure semiconductor for example you take a silicons it has a 
four valence electrons, uh, spectra valence electrons you are call, atoms you are calling, and that four valence electrons is sharing with the neighboring atoms of silicons and forms a four covalent bonds. You can observe they forms a covalent four covalent bonds with the neighboring atoms and they are tightly packed and at a low temperature there will be no free electrons because of that reason they behave like insulator at zero Kelvin. But as the temperature increases as it absorbs the some thermal energy as temperature increases that some of these electrons is become free okay? and some of the electrons become free by breaking covalent bonds as a result as electrons become free it create a vacancy and that vacancy is called holes with a, a positive charge and whatever electron become free is called negatively charged carrier with a free electron and these free electrons as well as holes is taken a part in a conductivity because of that reason in case of semiconductor there will be two charged carriers that is electrons and holes okay you can observe pictures there will be some number of uh, holes are created because of breaking of wall and bonds and as a result few electrons are also available in a conduction band and few holes are available in a valence band but you remember in an intrinsic semiconductor number of electrons is always equal to number of holes is to free electrons with the extra numbers now holes could a vacancy could a create with the holes are there so that number of electrons is equal to number of holes but the conductivity is low okay? at a room temperature the conductivity is low we have to enhance or we have to increase the conductivity by raising temperature of course its conductivity may increase but it is not practically not possible and because of that reason we are adding some impurity atoms we are adding some impurity atom to the semiconductors and that type of semiconductor is called eccentric semiconductor what is eccentric semiconductor a semiconductor doped with a suitable impurity to increase its conductivity and such a semiconductors are called eccentric semiconductor okay? such a semiconductors are called eccentric semiconductor and depending upon what type of impurity atom we are going to be added to the pure semiconductor we have a two types really okay? here we type it one p type of semiconductor or n type of semiconductor so that what is a doping the process of adding impurity atoms to the pure semiconductor is called doping the process of adding impurity atoms to the pure semiconductor the small quantity of impurity of atom is going to be added uh, such a that this physical or chemical properties of this pure semi semiconductor should not alter in that ratios a uh, few uh, impurity atom is going to be added that process is called doping and atom which is added is called dopant okay? the impurity atom which is added is called dopant and there will be two type of dopants uh, we are uh, using for a silicon or germanium and it may be a, a pentavalence means five valence electrons uh, atoms will be added and or for example arsenic antimony phosphorus etc they have a five valence electron there is one type of impurity atoms usually going to be added to the semiconductor or trivalent impurity atoms like four valence three valence electrons uh, atoms also can, can be added and for example indium boron aluminum etc that also can be added and such a way that we can get a impure eccentric semiconductor depending upon which type of impurity atom which is added we have two types n type and p type see there is a two type of eccentric semiconductor is a n type of semiconductor and p type of semiconductor in details the n type of semiconductor when eccentric semiconductor is doped with a pentavalent impurity atoms like arsenic or uh, bismuth etc in which the negatively charged carriers like free electrons is works as a charge carriers and is called n type of semiconductor that electrons are extra electrons are present because of that reason it is totally negatively charged and due to that reason it is named as a n type of semiconductor 
They are whatever they is in picture you can observe arsenic as doped with the silicons. There will be some of the uh, silicon atom is replaced by arsenic and but arsenic has a five valence electrons. It required only four valence to form a four covalent bonds. Then one additional electrons is attached in this uh, particular parent elements. Whenever you apply a potential difference that is available for conductivity. And like that, there will be extra electrons is available and that impurity atom is giving one extra electron for conductivity and due to that reason that atom is called donor atom. Impurity atoms are called donor atoms. And if you totally if you observe these pictures, you can observe that there will be one three electrons there is additional charge carrier is available in a conduction band. We have total band if you observe here. Conduction band has more electrons than holes in a valence band. Like that electrons is more number than holes. N e is greater than N h, and electrons are more in number. They are called majority charge carrier, and holes are less in number. And with that reason, they are called minority charge carrier. This is a p-type of semiconductor. Next, you see. This is the n-type of semiconductor. Next, we'll see p-type of semiconductor. In case of p-type of semiconductor, eccentric semiconductor is doped with a, a trivalent impurity atoms like aluminium, boron, etc. There will be three valence electrons are there in these atoms, and like that, it is replaced. Few atoms is replaced by trivalent impurity atoms, and such a way that one extra four is creating, and that four is works as a charge carriers. In case of p-type of semiconductor, that hole is positive charge. Due to that reason, it is called positive type or p-type of semiconductor. Every trivalent impurity atom is donating one extra because that uh, bond is incomplete due to one shortage of electrons. That particular place is always accepting one electron from neighboring atoms, and due to that reason, that impurity atom is called acceptor atom. That impurity atoms. Which is present in p-type of semiconductors called acceptor atoms. If you totally observe this structure, is like this: there will be one vacancy there in a every one impurity atoms, and already as the temperature increases, few vacancies created in valence band, few electrons in conduction band. If you count total number of valence electrons as well as these holes, the electrons are minority charge carrier, less number holes are more number. Or number of holes is Greater than number of electrons. As a result, we can say holes are majority charge carriers and electrons are minority charge carrier in case of p-type of semiconductor. So that we can totally summarize like this. In usually in examination, they are asking distinguish or write the difference between p-type and n-type of semiconductor. The p-type or n-type of semiconductors can easily differentiate by adding some impurity atoms. See here, in n-type of semiconductor is obtained by adding pentavalent impurity atom. P-type of semiconductor is obtained by adding trivalent impurity atom to the semiconductor. So like that, in n-type, the whatever impurity atom is added is called donor atom. It is donating one extra electron to the conductivity. Or in p-type, what is impurity atom is added is called acceptor atom because it is giving one extra force to the semiconductor and in n type electrons are majority charge carriers in case of p type holes are majority charge carrier or in case of n type electrons are majority means holes are minority charge carrier and in case of p type electrons are minority carriers there are the differences between n type of semiconductors and p type of semiconductor